Who do you want to be when you grow up? Where do you want to work? Dear innovators, like me, you've probably been asked these questions a lot since you were young. We get asked by our parents, our teachers, our colleagues, our mentors, our friends, and even our romantic partners. People want to know this to understand who we are and how they want to relate to us. But what's also interesting is when we get to ask the second question. What do you recommend for me based on what you know of me? Sometimes, the answers aren't always what you hope to hear. Hi, this is Monica King at Curious Monica, where I study how different people thrive at different jobs. Today, I'm excited to introduce you to a new segment of our show, Reimagine, where I share bite-sized power insights and actionable tips for innovators like yourself. The idea came up for two reasons. One, I'm still deep in development with our next episode content. Sorry, innovators, didn't want to rush the development and impact the quality of the work you deserve. And two, I'm in a lot of interesting conversations with leaders and innovators every day, and I wanted to find a thoughtful way to share insights from these conversations with more people easily. This bite-sized, actionable advice audio column is one way. I hope to empower you and spark more questions and courage in your journey. And today, I want to speak about all the advice we get in our careers and career goals. What to seek and what to let go of. As a career-driven female, I've always been an advocate of asking a lot of questions. Anyone I met that I admired, I would ask, how did you get to enjoy your work? What do you do? Why do you enjoy it? What are the things you wish you knew before you got into it? Are you paid well? What do you have to be good at to grow in this career? What if I'm not good at certain things? Can I still see a career growth? I took a lot of these to heart. These were insightful, truthful reflections of what they knew, learned, and experienced. Clearly, someone who has more experience than me would know these answers. Maybe because of that, I never forgot a specific conversation I had in college. I was doing my career conversation with my professor as an undergraduate. I was driven, but an okay writer. I loved organizing events, but not necessarily being a speaker. I worked hard, but I was clumsy and was aware of the mistakes I'd make. Given all of this, I found it intriguing how he emphasized that whatever path I choose to pursue in public policy, I should probably never do sales. I wasn't a good salesperson. I wasn't a speaker nor a writer. How would I do business? I also didn't do well in math and I'd always get my economic terminologies messed up. So he wisely shared how I may enjoy more structure and formality that come with other options, but not in the business world. This was someone who I thought knew me well. Was I interested in business at that time? Not really. Was I eager to hone those skills at that time? Not really. Still, it struck me at how his visible, you are not good at this voice made me feel. Because wait, but why? What if I am interested in that in the future? 15 years later, I'm reminded of this moment as I sit across my mentee in a video call. She was in tears. She felt overwhelmed with stress as she thought about her career journey and wanted advice on how she can find her path. She felt confused. All the advice she got from people showed her what she was good at, bad at, what she should have done, and what she did not do. She felt like a failure. She felt underutilized. She felt misunderstood. And she reminded me of my old self. So I asked her the question I wish I was asked earlier that day with my professor. What are you great at? What do you love doing? And what do you want to do more of and get better at? She paused and started beaming. 
As she started listing all the things she loved, she quickly realized how that was defining opportunities for her. She loved working with people. She could reframe learning how to do procurement paperwork to see that she is giving businesses and people opportunities to work and grow. She loved poetry and technology. She could tie her love in both as an opportunity to tell poems with her coding skills as a hobby outside of work. Will any of this all translate to a paid job? Maybe not, but it will bring her more joy, more insights, and hence more opportunities to explore what a new career can be. Most importantly, instead of me giving her a finite answer on what I think she will be good at, I'm letting her choose to reimagine what she wants to do, to let her see all the possibilities. Today, with my business, I do sales every day. Was I good at it from the beginning? No. <laughs> I still wouldn't say it's my strength, but I'm getting better at it. I'm glad though that I didn't let that advice of what I should do or not do, based on what someone thought or knew of me, define me or my career. Because today, not only have I learned how much I enjoy writing and speaking, but I've also learned how great I am at it the more I do. It's something that brings me, and many others, joy. So as I speak with someone or prepare these episodes where someone searches for an quote code answer, I give them back a question and trust that they will be able to find the answer. The world is changing and so are we each day. How limiting is it to judge the tree when it's a seed? Everyone has limitless potential to grow. They have to first believe it, nurture it, seek advice, and choose whether to take that advice or not. Today, I still ask for a lot of advice, but I've gotten better at recognizing what to do with it. Because what I collect are inputs that will help me continue to reimagine bigger of what more can be done. The choice is yours. Reimagine who you want to be by first asking yourself who you want to be and why. Thanks for stopping by our first Reimagine series at Curious Monica. I hope you found it helpful. Please don't forget to take a moment to share, rate, leave a review, and ask us a question. I'll be back again with our next episode where we'll study where in the world we're going with the workplace. This is Monica King, and you're listening to Curious Monica at Innovators Box. I'll see you next week.